Hi everyone, my name is Richard Santoro, and I welcome you to Third and Zen, the YouTube channel where every week I'm sharing a spiritual message to nourish ourselves, heart, mind, body, and soul. First, I want to thank you for stopping by the channel. Thanks for checking out today's video. I hope this video finds you doing well, and I hope you're taking the time to care for yourself, heart, mind, body, and soul, and I hope you're remembering that you are worthy of the time and the energy and all the love that goes into caring for ourselves, heart, mind, body, and soul. Again, thanks for stopping by the channel. If you want to check out, I'm sorry, if you want to like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff, it does help. But either way, I appreciate you being here. With that being said, let's just uh, take a nice deep breath. <sighs> let's take a moment, just settle our body. Take a deep breath. Signal to the brain that it's time to just relax. Invite ourselves to just be still. Do our best to just be present as best we can. Maybe adjust our posture. Maybe release any tension we're holding in our, our back, our shoulders especially, our face, our brow. We don't even realize it sometimes. So just take a moment. Just be still. Invite yourself to be open and present. And let's get started with today's message, shall we? I have a radical idea. I think that we should change front lawns, all of our front lawns, into fruit and vegetable gardens. Now, again, I know that this is a radical idea, and I know that my idea has plenty of drawbacks and challenges, so I'm open to input and suggestions, of course. And to be clear, just to be straightforward, I have nothing against lawns, per se, but I do think that we can do better for ourselves as a society and as individuals. Let me explain. Changing our front lawns into gardens has a lot of benefits to it. We'd be creating more food, which means we can feed more people, and it would be healthier food, grown in a much healthier way than a lot of food. Every study done on gardening will tell you how amazingly healthy it is for our hearts, minds, bodies, and souls. Gardens are also a more unique and personal outward expression than a lawn. And they will also lead to better use of our everyday waste via composting. And since we'll be eating the food, we'll also be more mindful of how environmentally unfriendly and hazardous pesticides and f the fertilizers that we might normally be using actually are. And hey, all of this gardening will also be better for the honeybees and the local ecosystem, which is always a huge plus. And it's also a way that we'll save on the fuel that's used by landscapers who maintain so many lawns. There's also some other bigger more far-reaching benefits to this radical idea of mine. We spend $40 billion a year on lawns. That money, uh, that money would be saved and much better spent. America's grass lawns also use more water than all of the wheat and corn in the United States. And grass is our leading crop for water consumption by far. The EPA states that one-third of all public water is used for grass, and that number can be as high as 70% of water used in drier areas just for grass. That's a lot of water consumption that we can save and will be used more productively on gardens. And speaking of productivity, we spend 3 billion human hours a year mowing lawns, Three billion. To put that in perspective, okay, over an eight-year period, that's 24 billion human hours, which is three and a half times more than the 6.7 billion hours that was spent in the eight years of the Apollo mission to put someone on the moon. Just think of the difference in those two. And yes, yes, mowing a lawn is a, is a healthy activity, to be sure. But with my radical idea, we will still have a healthy activity and definitely be able to make better use of our time and have a lot more positive benefits. And I'd like to ensure that my radical idea of gardens, 
instead of front lawns can't be monetized. It's not a big money-making venture, but a betterment of society venture. I have no idea how we would do that, uh, but I don't want to go down the route of things that have been corrupted because they are part of a for-profit world like healthcare, education, or the prison system. So somehow, let's do our best to keep it more pure. Now, like I said, I know that there are challenges and obstacles to my radical idea. I know that not everyone has a front lawn for a garden, and not every area is conducive to gardening. With apartments, urban areas, different climate conditions and such, and not everyone can physically do the work. I totally get it. But perhaps we can share the burden and set up an exchange and a neighborly fellowship program where people work together. We can get youth to work with some older people, with the older folks that were struggling a little more physically. People who live in urban areas can work with people who live in the suburbs and in more rural areas. We can involve the homeless and veterans and those who are incarcerated. Heck, we should do this in all prisons and in all schools and even in businesses. I know that this isn't, I know that this is not a practical idea and I know that there would be a lot of resistance. It goes against the status quo and it would be a big, huge change, I get it. But I feel that it would be better in many ways for us as a community and as individuals and as a society and again, I'm open to input to make it a much better idea. And hey, even if it doesn't happen in my lifetime, maybe someone hears of my radical idea and maybe it inspires them to make it happen in the future. Radical ideas can do that. I'm cool with that. So that's my radical idea. Changing our front lawns into gardens. I think it's a good idea, personally, and I think it's one that can help make this world a better place. Now, I have a question for you. What is your radical idea? What is your radical idea that can improve society and make life better for people? What is your radical idea that can inspire other people? What is your radical idea that can change the world? It really is something for all of us to think about. All of us finding our own radical idea is something for us to think about and important for three specific reasons. First is the obvious. Right now, as honestly always, we, we need radical ideas. As, as President John F. Kennedy once famously said, our problems are man-made, therefore they can be solved by man and by woman and by everybody. No problem of human destiny is beyond human beings. We have big problems in our society. That will always be the case. But like JFK said, we made these problems and we can fix them with radical ideas. Second, we need your radical idea. As my hero Mr. Rogers would always say at the end of his show, you have made this a special day by just being you. There's no person in the whole world like you. Amen. Nobody in the world is like you. And that is your gift. Each of us brings something to this world that nobody else can. Our own thoughts and experiences and gifts. We need your radical idea. And the third and last reason why all of us, all of you, need to think about your radical idea to change the world and make it a better place is because many of us happen to be Christians. We are followers of Jesus. And those who are followers of Jesus, those who are Christians, we're called to walk in the footsteps of Christ. And radical ideas, that is exactly what he did. Jesus flew in the face of conventional society, and he didn't think twice about doing so. He knew that his radical ideas would challenge people and greatly upset the status quo. And he knew it would have severe blowback onto him, and he didn't care. He didn't care because he knew that his radical ideas were the right things to do and that they would improve the world 
and improve society, and they would improve the lives of individual people. He was all about radical ideas. Loving your enemy was a radical idea. Turning the other cheek was a radical idea. Defining our neighbor as anyone in need, even if they are not a part of our tribe or our country, even if they are our enemy, is a radical idea. It was a radical idea. It still is a radical idea. Illustrating with the Good Samaritan how we should love our neighbor despite who they are or how we have defined them was a radical idea. Inclusion, including sinners and outcasts and illegals and all other labels that were not welcomed into the circle, was a radical idea. Not judging others was a radical idea. Elevating women to an equal or greater status than men was a radical idea. Forgiveness for all. Forgiveness that is unmerited and unearned and not based on status or sacrifice, but solely on love and grace was a radical idea. The idea that, that what goes into our body doesn't defile us or make us unclean, but rather what comes out of us, what we say makes us unclean, was a radical idea. That God's love and favor was for all people, that it is not earned but given freely, was a radical idea. The crucifixion and the resurrection were radical ideas. Jesus lowering himself below the status of even a slave to serve and dirty himself and wash the feet of the disciples of humanity was a radical idea. Again, Jesus was all about radical ideas and they were good ideas. And sadly, some of those ideas are still considered radical ideas today. But overall, they were radical ideas that changed the world and society and that changed the lives of individual people. We would do well to follow in his footsteps and do the same with our radical ideas. Now, I'd like to close this out today with a story. I, I know that it seems like I'm giving everyone, giving all of us a, a daunting task to, to come up with a radical idea that can change the world. I know that it seems often like, dude, what can I actually do? So let me share a story, a story that, that'll help illustrate all of this. It's the story of Rainbow Village. There is a town in Indonesia. I'm sorry. There is a town in Indonesia with a great deal, or it had a great deal of squalor, poverty, pollution, and all those types of challenges. Now, at one point, some local students who saw their town situation wanted to make a change. So they had a radical idea. And this was just a few years ago, not that long ago. The radical idea was to paint the whole village with a variety of colors. Homes, buildings, schools, everything. Vibrant and all different colors. And the townspeople agreed. Once everything was painted, the village became this visual rainbow. A rainbow village. Let me just show you some pictures of it really briefly before I continue. We got that right there. Look at that. Isn't that cool? And we have, yes, I know this isn't the best printout. Actually, that doesn't look too bad. And then we have, we have this. I mean, just look how cool that is. I don't know. I love it. I find it so super cool, right? Isn't that awesome? So, as you can see, it changed the aesthetic and the visual. Oops. It changed the aesthetic and the visual of the village. And it also changed the village and the individuals. In the process of this rainbow-like painting and visual overhaul, the residents also cleaned up much of the squalor and the debris that had littered and plagued their area. And they quickly found a new sense of pride and joy in their homes and in their community and in themselves as individuals. They also found friendships and bonds as they built a new sense of fellowship and connection with one another. And... It also led to a new economic uptick in tourism, as people now wanted to come and see this rainbow village, helping this impoverished town begin to get a much needed leg up 
all in a very short time, and all from a radical idea. But that's not the end of the story. Now, remember how I said that radical ideas can also inspire others? Well, not long after this happened, a school principal in another impoverished town in Indonesia heard about this radical idea and the change and impact it had on this rainbow village. So he went to his local government and presented the same idea, and the mayor of his town approved $22,000 for all of their residents, for all the residents of their town to paint every building the minimum of three vibrant colors. Once again, homes, schools, buildings, stores, everything. They painted everything with vibrant colors. And they also added some mosaics and some individual artistic flair here and there. And once again, another village in Indonesia is now known as Rainbow Village. And of course, like the previous village that they had, like the previous village that had the radical idea that inspired them, this village too, so their lives change for the better as a community and a society and as individuals. Once again, a cleaner, more beautiful village with no more squalor or pollution or anything of that nature. Residents with more pride in where they live, more joy and a new sense of fellowship and community with each other. And again, as in the last instance, in this instance, a big uptick in their economy and tourism, even more so than the village whose radical idea inspired them because this village had become a social media sensation. People now come from all around, all around the world to see this wonderfully artistic rainbow village and take their pictures and selfies and post them on social media. Lives changed forever as a community and as a society and as individuals, all because of someone's radical idea. Radical ideas 2,000 years ago from Jesus changed the world. And a radical idea from just a few years ago changed the lives of people no different than you or I. People who looked around, saw their community and their neighbors, and wanted to make things better. And with a radical idea, they did. And like Jesus before them, their radical ideas inspired other people. So, maybe it's my radical idea of turning our front lawns into gardens that will inspire people and make a change in our society and our community and in ourselves for the better. Or maybe, just maybe, it's one of your radical ideas. So again, my friends, what is your radical idea. Thanks be to God. Amen. Okay, my friends, again, I want to thank you for stopping by the channel. I want to thank you for checking out today's video. I hope you found it fruitful, and I hope in some way, shape, or form it helps you on your journey going forward. Either way, I'm going to encourage you as best I can to just remember that you are worthy of love, you are worthy of care, patience, understanding, and I hope you find whatever it is you need in this moment or in your journey going forward. And I hope that you were able to find fellowship with God and peace and joy in this world. All right. I love you all. Thanks for stopping by the channel. Thanks for checking out the video. Go. Go in peace. Have a good one. Ciao.